What's up, guys? We are back with another Mythic Legions review, taking a look at the most recent entry in the Figura Obscura subline that they started about a year ago with Krampus. And we're going Halloween this time, which makes perfect sense for the time of year, with our Headless Horseman 2-pack. So we've got a figure and a horse this time around, so a whole shebang, everything all in one go. New horse to deal with, new style figure, new parts. There's a lot of stuff uh, to, to dig into with this set. The first of which, though, of course, is the box because... I mean, they kind of went all out with this one. This one is done up fully by Nate Barch, so you've got a magnetic clasping slip cover on the front here, so you can pull it off. And this piece of artwork on the front is fully removable, but you've got fantastic artwork with our figure of Shira logo on the sides. You've got that big shot of the horseman on the front when he, on all of his pumpkin-y glory. And then the back of the actual box there uh, will showcase the horseman riding with his fiery pumpkin head. But like I said, this is... This is a magnetically sealed clasp, so you can pop this off and you've got sort of like a backer, which has a lot more of that artwork here in sort of, you know, like a uh, Ichabod Crane style setting. But I really like this. We did, we had this for the Krampus as well, the, the magnetic seal and clasp, but it's just a, it's a very premium presentation. I do like that. But, you know, this is the real deal. So we've got our actual box within and it's a window box treatment. It's also got a window on the top with the 4-H logo up there, but you've got your figure and the horse in the window, big monstrous window to showcase everything. Now we've got our nameplate down on the bottom, more of that Nate Barch artwork all over it, kind of setting the scene with that nice sort of uh, deep blue color pattern. And then again, the back of the box there, as you saw previously, showcases the horseman in all of his fiery glory, about to chuck that pumpkin right at some, some unsuspecting victim. So I am super excited about this release. The packaging alone is, is worth the price of admission. I think they did a killer job because this, I mean, this sort of chipboard thing that they, they do is really cool. It's something very different for the line because this is, you know, a more, a more premium package. But let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our Mythic Legion's Figura Obscura Headless Horseman Two pack, we've got the whole deal, we've got the figure, we've got the horse all in one go. And I am so, so happy with this set. I mean, at this point, a lot of folks already have it. Everybody's calling it their figure of the year candidate. And frankly, I don't think that they're wrong because there's a lot about this figure that is everything I have wanted for Mythic Legions in a very, very, very long time. We've got tons of new parts, well, newish parts. We've got recent parts, let's say it that way, recent parts. We've got a full-on wired soft goods cape. We've got a pumpkin head. We've got a new horse, a lot of familiar parts, but it's a new horse for folks that want a non-skeletal black horse. So there's just a lot of stuff going on with this set. And I am super happy with the choices that they made when it comes to how this guy is put together. So. Let's see what they can do, see how they move around. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the horseman first, and, and then we'll get to the steed. So let's see what the figure is capable of. So let's pull this guy aside. Let's center our horseman there. Now, for all intents and purposes, this is still just a normal Mythic Legions figure, but if you don't have your Alithia wave, you may, may you may not know who this is or what these parts are like, because while it is still a normal Legions figure. This is built on the, the Valak body, and that figure has, in many ways, some small improvements, at least I think, that make the figure move just a little bit better. I'm not talking a night and day difference, but there's stuff about these parts that do seem to just be a little bit more conducive to getting into poses better, for lack of a better way of putting it. So we've got a head that can look super, super far up. Well, when he has a head anyway, we'll get to that. So he can look up really good. He can look down really good. You've got your tilt side to side, full rotation, of course. Now he does have a cape on. It doesn't exactly, it doesn't really, well, at all get in the way because of course it's soft goods. So that's why I'm gonna leave it on while we're doing this. So the arms go out at the shoulder. They of course will rotate in and out all around really. Of course, that's when the, the cape is gonna kind of get in the way. We've got a single jointed elbow, but it's better than 90 degrees, slightly better than 90. And you've got rotation. Forearms, of course, swivel. You've got swivel at the wrist and hinge. These are lateral hinges uh, on him right now. We've got our torso, which, of course, you know, typical 1.0 style Mythic Legion's torso. So he goes backwards a decent bit. He goes forwards a good bit, too. We've got our tilt side to side, which is really nice. And then you've got full rotation on there. Of course, it's a big ball peg. At the waist, legs go out. 
about that far. I mean, he's able to sit and ride the horse just fine. So what he's really meant to do, he's capable of doing very well. Kick that leg forward. Backward really good. You do have a thigh twist up there. We've got our single jointed knees, and these are better than 90, slightly, just like the arms, better than 90, just a little bit. You've got your twist there also. And then at the ankles, you've got your rotation, of course, which is pretty normal. We've got pretty good rocker down here. And then you've also got hinges at those ankles. So he is, I mean, he is, for all intents and purposes, a very standard 1.0 style Mythic Legions figure. But being built on these parts and this format, I do think he is a little bit better articulated than, say, some of the original figures. And that's mostly just in the elbows and the knees. They do seem to have a slight bit better range than what the line is, has been capable of historically. So a lot of familiarity in the way he moves, but just a slight improvement that I am very, very happy to see kind of bleed into the line going forward. As is almost, well, universally the case when it comes to Legions for me, the big thing for this figure is undoubtedly the visuals and then ultimately the idea that they're trying to sell here. So they're trying to give us the idea of that, you know, mythical, legendary, headless horseman, the pumpkin motif, all of that. And I really do think they chose a nice array of parts because a lot of the Alithia stuff we're seeing gives us a little bit of a different leaning. It's not just a figure that's clad in huge, huge bulky armor. We're getting relatively beefy guys, but they have more leather type of armor. And I think that suits the horseman perfectly. Uh, I'm very, very happy again that they chose this particular body. You know, I've still not even gotten around to reviewing Valak, but I basically am now. He's an amazing figure, and it translates really well here. They are very, very, very similar, and I'm, that's not a negative thing. Uh, they are very similar because they are basically the exact same figure, but I really like uh, this idea for him. All of this black with these silver accents. There's a little bit of purple uh, just on the pouches here. You've got sort of this gunmetal color going on for the uh, shin guards. But for the for the most part, the figure is just black. And, and it works really nicely just to sell, you know, the sort of evil, the knight theme for the, you know, the ride. And it works really, really well, especially when you get him mounted up on that horse. It's just this big void of black with, of course, this humongous pumpkin head. But it's a great mix of parts. It's new stuff, or well, newer stuff, recent stuff. I gotta quit saying new because we've got so much new coming. Recent stuff, it's the current wave of, of, of parts, basically. And I'm really happy with it. I love this, this cuirass that he wears. I love the, you know, the, like the leather greaves that he has, the belt with all these little, uh, actually, you know, just actual belt pieces. It's a weird belt. I don't know that I would personally wear anything like that, but it looks good. He wears it well. He's got some purple on him. He's got the silver buckle. And this is also one of those figures uh, that utilizes the new torso system. And I mentioned this previously where you have a plate that sits on the torso and allows for easy swapping of parts without them tooling up an entirely unique torso. So there's a big hole in the chest, the plate goes in there, and then of course it allows customizers to make new chest plates for figures without having to make a new torso. I really think that's a cool idea. He still has the same, you know, back system. So you got the ports on the back, even though he doesn't come with pauldrons. He is one of the rare figures that does not have pauldrons, nor does he really need them. Because in the, in the place of that, we get this incredibly fantastic cape. I really like this sort of muted red color that we've got, but of course we have the black and it is a big old cape. I mean, I can't stress that enough. It is, uh, it's big. There's a lot of material here. You've got the sort of um, metal clasps and the chain. The only thing that, that I don't particularly like, and this is a thing that I have with pretty much any cape when a figure doesn't necessarily have a way to cinch it down super tight, is that it does kind of sit under the, uh, you know, the, the neckerchief that he has here, this sort of scarf. So it holds it in place, but you've got you've to kind of work at it sometimes. You might have to cinch the wire up around the neck to make it sit correctly, because that's how I want it. I want those uh, little whatever you call these, little little doodads, to be sitting as forward as possible. You might have to work at it. But it does have a full wire all the way around, so you can get it up and you know into some sort of menacing pose. It is kind of a light wire, so you might have to work at it a little bit, but it is capable of being you know, up and out of the way, kind of flowing behind him, of course, you know, when he's on the on the horse, or just as he's sort of like, you know, brushing it to the side. You know, something like that. Because, of course, he does have a style pose hand on him here in the box. We'll talk about hands briefly. But this guy does come with your uh, little extra bits of hands, which is definitely something we don't see too often with Legions. And then he does have 
Of course, a new part when it comes to the scarf, the little neck piece, so you've got the sort of shirt collar that stick, sticks up out of the armor, and then you've got that to sort of uh, play up the idea of, of where his head's gonna, gonna go, or should have been, I suppose. And then he has a black neck under there. But undoubtedly, beyond the cape, which, you know, again, I'm super happy to see a full wired soft goods cape in the line. I'm still ultimately drawn to the pumpkin head, and it's just tremendous. There's a great amount of detail up here. It's got a nice muted, but not like bright, bright orange color. And then there's like a highlighted yellow with orange accents, sort of flames on the inside almost, is how it looks like. And what's pretty crazy about this is literally just a few days before this was announced and went up for sale, I finally bit the bullet and got a custom pumpkin head for Legions uh, from Nikki Nicole Customs which I'm still gonna absolutely use and it's gonna pair up nicely with this guy. But of course, that is my luck. But it's really cool to be able to get the Horseman's own take on a pumpkin head, which has been kind of done a few times in the custom community for Legion. So it's really cool to get their idea. And it's big and bulky and it just looks great. I mean, he's got that nasty, gnarly, crooked smile and everything and the just asymmetrical eye holes. It's really cool. It looks fantastic. And of course, you know, through and through, this is all of the same Legion sculpt and paint quality you would expect. So everything is painted, tons of little detail, tons of little hits of, of metallic here and there, real metal chain, premium wired soft goods. This figure is basically what I want every figure to be going forward. I want it to have a little bit of this more, you know, enhanced articulation in some ways. With the soft goods, it's just a really nice amalgamation of parts and pieces and ideas that works really, really well within this line. Now, as far as accessories goes, the Horseman does have a pretty solid spread, but it's all about what he comes with and not the quantity of things he comes with because, well, he comes with a horse, so that's a whole thing. There's a lot more to talk about than just this figure, but he's got a couple of incredibly impactful accessories that absolutely just put this figure over the top. And one thing in particular that, well, it confused me when I saw it on the listing, but it made so much more sense when I found out what it was. The first thing we've got to talk about though is this head sculpt. So we've got the alternate head, which of course he can he can use as a flaming head, but it's also meant to be something that he throws. So you've got your, you know, cackling, maniacal, smiling jack-o'-lantern head with flames shooting out of the eyes, shooting out of the back of the head, and it's just incredibly striking. You know, it's part of the idea, the shtick, with the legend of the Headless Horseman, and I think they did a tremendous job here. You know, I, we don't have a lot of stuff like this in Legions. I'm not talking about a flaming head because, well, we actually do have uh, that already. I'm talking about effects, and we're, we're, we're getting some. We just haven't exactly gotten there yet when it comes to the waves that include that stuff. So it's cool to see more of that kind of bleed into the line a, bit, a little bit, and I think they did a tremendous job here, uh, specifically because of how they managed to make this work. So we do get some extra hands with this guy, and one of them, the most important hand truly, is the head holding hand. So it's a style posy kind of hand, but it has a full-on peg attached to it. And I will say it is a little on the loose side, that peg, like I don't feel like the figure exact, the head exactly sits on it as tight as it fits on a normal body peg, but it also works just fine. The only real thing you have to watch out for, especially with this head, is just balance because this is heavy. And the hand, I mean, normally the hands don't hold something that that do anything like this in terms of weight. And it's also not holding it, it's sitting on it. So you do have to watch that, but I think they made the right choice by doing something like this. And of course, you can put any head you want on there. Uh, so you can, you know, throw a, you know, any any evil good guy head, whatever you want. Whoever the horseman happens to be murdering at that point in time, you can throw their head on there. And I do really, really like that. Uh, we do get a, a few extra hands beyond that. So he did have the style pose right hand on in the box and a left gripping hand. You do get some extra gripping hands and these have vertical hinges on them. So you get a set of those. And then you also get a left uh, gripping style posey kind of hand. It's not style style pose, but it's it's got a grip to it. And you have all, also can use the hand pack hands from the Alithia wave for this guy also, since of course he is the Valak body. Uh, it'll work in that regard as well. And then he also has a sword. And it, this is just standard sword. You know, we've seen this, I don't know, however many times in the line, but he does come with a sword. But the last and weirdest accessory that he comes with, but of course it makes perfect sense, is the neck meat 
that you put in the place of the neck peg. So, you know, you take the jack-o'-lantern head off, you got to take the neck off also because the head gets lopped off entirely. And this thing just sits in there really lightly, which I'm very happy with because uh, if this was really stuck in there, you'd have a real problem getting that out. But it is literally, you know, the severed head stump. So you've got the neck meat in there and the spinal cord. You've got a vertebrae showing in there. I think that is just tremendous. I was really confused by that when I saw this listing. You know, obviously it didn't deter me from buying it, but I had no idea what this little weird disc was until, you know, the, the initial reveal from Door Claire came out. I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. And of course, it is incredibly well thought out to just have all of this stuff. These two pieces in particular, in conjunction with this head, I mean, are just a game changer, really. They, they elevate this figure into something else. And again, he's already a fantastic figure, but you get all these other ways to change him up. And how many figures come with something like that? I mean, I can't think of any off the top of my head that come with that. And it's just another little detail that makes him that much more impressive. Of course, this is not just one figure. We do get the horse. You know, what would the Headless Horseman be without his horse? So this two-pack does include a new horse. And it's new in the sense that it's a different horse. And it's not new in the sense that there's really new parts here. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is basically just Athon with a black coat of paint because we've got Athon's head. We've got the furry hooves down here at the bottom and the furry calves, ankles on the horse. So you've got a lot of stuff that we're familiar with and if you've got a horse, you basically know what to expect here. But if this is your first horse, well, this is all new territory. So as far as moving them around, you do have some swivel at the neck and then up and down here. The head is mobile also. So there's articulation up and down. It's, it's a ball peg here. And then you've got shimmy side to side. The legs all have quite a bit of articulation, frankly. So you've got a hinge at the torso. You've got some shimmy there. We've got a uh, swivel at the knee, and then you've also got hinges down here also. And then you've got a hinge at the hoof with a little bit of shimmy down here also as far as swiveling those, uh, those feet. The back legs are different though. So they hinge, they flex in and out to one, aid in stability, especially if you want to rear this horse back up on its hind legs. And then they move in and out at the actual torso, not just, you know, down here that's all the way up at the top. Then you've got your knee. I don't, I don't really know what to call these particular joints on horses. You do have some swivel, but not a whole lot because of the shape. And then you've got a hinge at the, the other knee, the second knee down here. So kick it all the way up. And then you've got some, sh some swivel there as well. And then more of the same for these feet. So you've got hinge forward and backward and you've got some swivel here also. It's always so difficult to do this on camera. And then you've got swivel down there at those feet. The tail is also articulated, so it's got hinge up and down, and then a swivel basically at the butt. So this thing is pretty well articulated. Like, I've, I've never felt like I've been really missing anything when it comes to horses. Basically, I just want to have them standing still anyway. But you can get them into a run or a gallop or, a, or you know, a stride of some kind. And then, of course, you can rear them up on their hind legs. Now, What's really cool about this horse, though, is that it is it is new. It's different. It's not new in the sense that it's, you know, a bunch of new parts, but it's a different horse. And I say that in the sense that, you know, we just did get a black horse, but this is still a different horse. So this is Athon's head, and you can tell by the, you know, like the crazy, evil, open mouth that it has. I mean, it's basically screaming at you. And then you've got... This, I believe, is Ballius's, the standard horse, uh, mane, which is laying down. And then we've got the Athon, and maybe the Centaur also, the ankles, calves, whatever you want to call them, and the feet with all the fur, because Ballius is a little bit just more subdued in that nature. We've got a lot of normal hallmarks for the horses, though, in the sense that you've got your saddle. And this is all done up, I mean, it's literally all done up in a black color scheme with slight hints of purple sort of on this mat. I don't know what you call this. I'm not a horse guy. So there's a little hint of purple here. You've got your uh, little knapsack uh, of doom up here with a little bit of a gray, and then there's brown straps up there, but it's still got all of that sort of leather patterning on the saddle, so it looks worn and used. And then you've got the little collar piece here, which this might be new, I'd have to go back and check, uh, but this actually is just meant to really cover the seam on the neck, which I think is a great idea, because it should be there anyway, but then it makes the horse look a lot more seamless. It just flows a little bit better. 
And then you've got your sort of standard bridle up here at the top, which I, I'm pretty sure is just Ballius' stuff again. But then we've got, you know, a slight hint of evil when it comes to this horse because we do have uh, like this sort of demon red eyes. And then there is a slight bit of red, just like on uh, Alithia's horse, Phobos, he has, or she has, I'm not sure if that's a male or female horse, uh, we've got purple down there, but on the horseman, Headless Horseman's uh, horse, we've got, there's too many horses in this, we've got red down here. So there's a bunch of red, just a little bit on the, on the, on the fur, on the hair, and then it's really heavy on the actual hooves themselves. And there is a slight bit in the tail. It's very, very muted though, but I think it looks pretty fantastic. Uh, it's a really, really nice horse. And I know there's a lot of folks out there who wanted a black horse and Phobos isn't necessarily it because it has a skeleton face. This is, you know, basically fresh out of the box, ready to go, black horse. If you really need it to be more realistic, paint the hooves, paint the eyes, and then you're basically done. However, he also does come with an accessory piece, which I don't know that we've gotten these for horses yet. I'd have to go back and check. My, my memory is a little foggy. So I've already mentioned that the mane here is Ballius's. This is Athon's mane. So it's kind of the one that's all windswept. It's back. It's, it looks a little bit more dynamic. And you can just pop this off and then you can pop this on. So there's a series of pegs and sort of markers down here that will allow it to lock into the channel. And there is a little tinge of red to it as well. It's, it's really slight, uh, but it is there. So it's really cool you get this option because, you know, you can, you can basically recreate the ride for the horseman and have him look like he's uh, blowing back in the wind with the tail, with the mane, and then you've got the furry uh, feet, all that stuff. So it looks a lot more dynamic. And I'm really happy that they included this. It's a small thing, but it's an impactful thing just to make the, make the horse, the figure, look a little bit more in motion. So it's a really cool horse. I mean, if you've got any of the other ones, you know what to expect already. But it's this combination of parts, again, that works really well to make this particular horse with this slight hint of red all over it look incredibly demonic and evil for your pumpkin guy. So yeah, overall, super, super happy with this set. I think that's quite obvious. And it definitely is figure release contender of the year material. Without a doubt, I, I would not begrudge anybody who put this at the top of their list right now. The figure on its own is tremendous. I think the horseman's mix of parts, the head holding hand, which is really weird to say, the pumpkin heads, the cape, all of it works to make a cohesive figure. And then when you add the horse in there, it just sells the idea, sells the scene even more so to make it this really, really complete two-pack this set to have your headless horseman in all of his glory. Not to mention the fact that the figure, the set comes in a tremendous looking box. I can't stress that enough. The artwork is amazing. The presentation is fantastic. That outer chipboard uh, magnet clasp that they have is just a really well thought out design and it looks great in or out of the box. So if you're in box collector, out of box collector, I think this is one that you will absolutely love and definitely not one to sleep on because I'm sure this one is going to skyrocket in value uh, as the years go by. So that's gonna do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Figura Obscura Headless Horseman. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.